inside our body and inside our cells, we have a great variety of different types of proteins. Now, let's suppose we want to study a specific type of protein. The question is, how do we get a hold of that protein of interest? Because inside our body, any given protein always exists in a mixture of all different types of proteins and all different types of biological molecules. So if we have a sample, if we have a solution of proteins, how do we know the protein that we want to study is in that mixture in the first place? And if that protein is in that mixture, how do we purify that sample and isolate that protein among all different types of proteins found in that mixture? Well, to answer question number one, to basically determine whether or not our protein is present in that sample, we have to conduct a protein assay. Now, what is a protein assay? Well, a protein assay is some type of test, is some type of procedure that allows us to identify the presence of that specific protein of interest based on some, on some type of specific property or some type of specific functionality of that protein. And we'll see exactly what that means in just a moment. So if we obtain a positive test result to our assay, then what that means is that protein of interest is present in that sample. If we get a negative result, that means the protein is not present in that sample and we have to go out and get a new sample that does contain that protein. So whenever we're conducting some type of assay, there are two questions we have to ask ourselves. Question number one is, is the protein present in our sample? And the way that we answer the question is by measuring the protein activity or if we're dealing with an enzyme, which is usually the case, we measure the enzyme activity of that protein. And we'll see exactly how that's done in just a moment. And the second question is, if that protein is present, and we can measure the enzyme activity, what is the concentration of that protein? What is the amount of protein found inside that sample? So once we know the enzyme activity and the concentration of that protein in our sample, we can then calculate the specific activity. And during our purification process, when we're isolating that specific protein, we can use the specific activity value to basically determine how pure our sample actually is. So we conduct our protein assay and we know that the protein is found inside our sample and then we begin carrying out the purification processes. And during these processes, this is when we use the specific activity value as we'll see in just a moment. So in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the different types of processes that we can use to basically purify our sample. In this lecture, we're going to focus on measuring enzyme activity when we conduct our protein assay. So to demonstrate how we can measure enzyme activity, let's actually focus on a specific type of enzyme found in our cells known as lactate dehydrogenase. So lactate dehydrogenase is a biological catalyst that basically converts lactate into pyruvate. In the process, we reduce NAD plus into NADH. So this is the oxidized version of nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide, and this is the reduced version of nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. So in our body, lactate is transformed into pyruvate by using lactate dehydrogenase. In the process, we reduce nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. Now, pyruvate and ADH are basically used uh, to basically form ATP molecules, the energy molecules used by our cells. Now, the question is, how do we measure the activity of this enzyme? So we can measure the activity of this enzyme indirectly by measuring how much of the product is actually formed. So our choice is we can either measure pyruvate or we can measure NADH. So let's focus on NADH. But before we actually measure NADH, we have to know some type of specific property of NADH that NAD plus doesn't actually have. 
Well, one major difference between NAD plus and NADH is the fact that NADH can actually absorb a specific type of light with a specific type of wavelength. So NADH can absorb light that has a wavelength of 340 nanometers. So basically, if we have some type of solution that contains these two reactants and we place our sample of enzymes into that solution, and if this enzyme is present in that mixture, then what happens is if we begin measuring how much light is absorbed, where the light has this specific uh, wavelength value, if the absorbance increases over time, then that means is we produce more of this product because this product is able to absorb more of that light. So once again, one property of reduced nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide, NADH, is that it has the ability to absorb light of a specific wavelength, 340 nanometers. Therefore, we can monitor the activity of the enzyme indirectly by examining how much light is absorbed by that solution. And this is shown in the following diagram. So in this diagram, these red dots are basically the NAD plus molecules and these blue and these blue figures are the lactate. So we take this solution and we add the enzyme sample into our solution. And if one of the enzymes in that sample is lactate dehydrogenase, then these blue figures will be converted into these purple pyruvate molecules. In the process, the red NAD plus molecules will be converted into the green NADH molecules. And as this process is, is uh, taking place, we're measuring how much light is being absorbed and if that is increasing, then we know that our enzyme is present because only this enzyme can catalyze this reaction. If nothing took place, if we measured no absorbance of light, then that means that enzyme is not present in our mixture. So what exactly is the enzyme activity? Well, the enzyme activity is the number of moles of product that are produced, in this case, the moles of NADH produced per the time that we're basically studying. So the time can be a minute, it can be five minutes, and so forth. So the enzyme activity is the moles of product divided by the time. Now, once we know the enzyme activity, we can then calculate what our concentration of that protein is. And once we know what the enzyme activity and the concentration of that protein, that enzyme, in this case, lactate dehydrogenase, we can then calculate the specific activity because the specific activity is the ratio of the enzyme activity to the concentration of our protein. So enzyme activity divided by amount of enzyme. So what exactly is this value? Well, the value tells us the moles of product produced over some time period per amount of enzyme found inside that particular sample. Now, what this can be used for is when we actually know, so following the assay, when we know that inside our sample we have our protein, we can then begin the purification process. And during the purification process, we can continually calculate the specific activity value. And if the specific activity value is increasing, then what that means is our sample is getting pure and pure. And eventually, if we have a sample in which we only have that enzyme, the lactate dehydrogenase, at this particular point, we're going to reach a maximum value for that specific activity, and this will no longer increase. The slope will be zero, it will be a straight line. So we can see that this value, which is calculated by knowing this and a concentration, can be used to basically determine if our sample is in fact pure. Now, in the next lecture, we're actually going to discuss how we purify our sample by beginning with our cell. Because if we want to study this particular enzyme, that enzyme is found in the cell. So the first question is, before we even conduct our assay, how do we actually isolate the lactate dehydrogenase from that cell? Well, we have to use a process known as differential centrifugation, and we'll discuss exactly what that means 
in the next lecture.